Good morning, good afternoon. Raquel Redmond from Brava Art Press. We have today um, a printmaking project. It's linocut printing. It's a project that um, is good for students probably from year five up to adults. In this session, we are going to talk about materials, but the materials are going to be just those materials that you need for your first session, which is preparing your design, drawing and transferring your design onto the block and cutting. To draw your drawing or your design, you need a small piece of paper like this, a pencil, a, a, a black pen, your line of block already cut up, you will need also some ink. Uh, we use the Chromacryl waterproof drawing ink set up in this situation. When you work in school, it's very important that the ink is always in the middle of the table and one or two or three paint brushes. Also, we need tracing paper or kitchen paper. We need carbon paper that we find in the um, news agencies. And we need the tools. We need the lino cut tools. They come from uh, art supplies for schools or any art supply store. And we need a bit of a masking tape. Dispense like that so everybody has quick access to masking tape. So when you start the first stage is all about drawing. Drawing a design, a complex design like that, or drawing a very simple design like that, that has been already drawn on the, on the line of block. Um, so we start, we're going to start by drawing. So to do the drawing, it's better to bring the camera closer so you will have a good view about how to design, how to draw, how to simplify, because it's better to start, as I said, um, with a simple design. Okay, this is how we create the design. Uh, I have a small uh, liner block here. It's better to start small if you are a beginner. So it's about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters square. You place that down on your, pa on your piece of paper and with a pen or a pencil, you can just draw the size of the line of block. So you know exactly the area, the size of the area that you have to create your design. So you can use the pencil to, I'm looking at this drawing that I did previously, but you could also look at a picture in a magazine or you can um, draw something that you have made. You can start your drawing from the beginning with black pen or you can go over with a black pen like this if you have time. So I have established the design here. Or you could do something really simple like this one. This one was done directly on the block, as you can see here, just painted with the ink like that, let it dry, and when it's dry, it's ready to cut. I have this design here that I have uh, done before of a big leaf on the right. My block is here. So this has been transferred into uh, tracing paper, if you have tracing paper, or kitchen paper, but remember when you use ki kitchen paper, you must use a permanent black pen. I'll transfer this into this, onto that uh, block, and I'll reverse that. So as you can see here, the big design, the big uh, leaf is on the left. So having a little bit of um, masking taper, masking paper, masking tape, I'll put it there and attach both things so they, not, they won't move. I got something 
here that is called carbon paper. A lot of you probably don't know about carbon paper. Carbon paper is not easy to find anymore, unfortunately, but uh, there are some news agencies that are still selling the carbon paper. So you put the carbon paper underneath there and transfer. Use a pencil or a viral. Pencil better because it's softer. The viral will, will um, break the, the paper if you are using kitchen paper. So I think I'm ready. There is my image. Now, as you can see, the lines here are very thin. So it's important at this point with the black pen to go over the lines and make those lines thicker. Like that with the tracing with the permanent black pen. And it's ready. You can now let it dry and start cutting. This is the cutting session. Um, everybody is supposed to have done your designs. You finish your designs. You have your designs next to you as a reference. I got this one here just to show you that you can also work in a large, uh, larger size. This is a, a is a detail, a section of my design here. And I have a very simple one that I have selected to actually cut on camera. I have here the bench hook, my little knife. My, this is my personal knife, so I'll just use this. And the lino, the lino block. Now, the idea of the bench hook is that it hooks on the table, but some students take, take it off the table, that's fine, because you can still work towards like that. Uh, you place your liner wherever you feel comfortable, and there is here, there is a stop. There is a piece of timber here. I uh, got my name there, because that is an indication that you're going to always cut in that direction. So it is important that to, it's called a stain the block before you start cutting so you know where you're going. Because those gray areas are very difficult to see sometimes if your block is a bit larger. With a sponge like this and a teeny bit of water, uh, you can apply, use some watercolor or dry paint and apply color like that, just like that. And you will see that your cutting will be a lot easier. So we will start cutting here. I got my, my stain in gray areas. You can see the marker, the felt pens looks a lot stronger. Uh, the, the paint has to be a bit uh, thicker, the application of paint. So I'll do just um, the orange area. So that's how you cut. You hold the block with your left hand you hold the knife like you're having a steak when you cut the steak with this finger driving the point like this. So, oh, and this is a round shape. That's what I wanted to show you this because when you go into the round shape like this, you never move this arm towards you, towards your fingers because you will cut your fingers. You always turn your block. You see, I'm turning that way. And maintain it, always keep in mind that you are going to cut against that. But if you don't have the bench hook, you can still cut by being very careful, holding your block with the left hand or the opposite hand if you are a, a left-handed person. I must say that for a left-handed person it's a bit difficult, but I have many students that uh, were left-handed people and they did it quite successfully. Here I have my big block and my design is in black. Black uh, ink is, is done with black ink. So I just like to show you when you have several shapes what you do. You go like that and define your shapes first by cutting along 
the, the shapes, in this case, this black oval shape. I'm cutting along that, like this. So in this case, I'm not cutting what is black. I'll cut everything that is the, in this sort of bluish grayish background. There's a lot to cut, isn't it? So we're going to do something different. We're going to cut some textures into it, like that. It will add beautiful, a beautiful effect. So you go push down, push down, push down, and the action is to push down and to move out. Push and out, push and out, like that. Repeating that way of cutting, like that, like this, like that. You can also cut, we're going to cut along here. You see how the knife just slipped? I didn't have the hand there, I had it on the back here, so it didn't cut me. And I'll cut that way, this way here. That way there. And I'll do different things here because you can cut in different ways. You can cut lots of lines, repetitions of lines. This is when you repeat a line like that. The knife is slipping to create textures and patterns. Repetitions of lines like that. Or you can create very, very little, little, little textures like very similar to the other one, but very close together to create beautiful patterns. Like that. Can you see that in, on camera? They are very close together. And the more you cut, you have to understand this very carefully, please. The more you cut, the more white or the more of the color of the paper you will bring in. We will see that when we print. There's a nice, a nice one that I like to do, which is moving, pushing down and moving your, your wrist like that. And that gives you a ragged, a very, very sort of jagged line like this. You see, move like that, move side by side, side to side. Here I have a good example of uh, the way to cut. These are all the little bits that I show you, like cutting, cutting, cutting. These are the same little bits, but they're very close together, so there's more white showing. These are repetitions of lines here, very, very fine lines. And these are lines that crisscross this way and that way. These are shapes that just been cut, cut around along the shapes and leave it nice plain black in this case. I'd like to show you how to do crisscross, so because I have some crisscross on the other picture that I show you. So my hand on the back because I don't want to cut myself when it slips. And just moving the wrist a little bit so you get this undulating lines. And more here. Oops. And I'm going to crisscross this from here. And that's how it goes. Always cut the lines along your shapes so you define your shapes first. It's the easiest thing to do. You can, you can do it without uh, defining your shapes first, but you have to be really experienced to do that. One important um, tip that I can give you is uh, to avoid going over the, the line into the other side, like from here to the black area. The best thing to do would be to cut all your design, all the outline of your design first. Cut it all along there. You see how I'm, I'm turning? and turning that, that like that, cut it all along here. So I'll show you in a minute what are you going to avoid by doing this. So this is the area with the outline, 
can go that way and cut that way there. Now, when you start cutting lines like here, for instance, this area, when you have cut all the outline and you cut your lines across, you know where to stop. You stop right here, like that. You avoid going to the black, to that area. You uh, will avoid that accident happening if you cut all your outline first. Here is an example, a very good example actually of drawing from nature or drawing first and then uh, making a print from nature using all of these textures that I've been showing to you, the repetitions of lines, more lines there, little textures here. And as you can see, everything that you cut becomes white because the color of the paper is white. If your paper is red, all of these bits are going to be red. This is the end of part one of our line of printing video. The first session, as you saw, is about designing, drawing and finding out really what would you like to do. Uh, you can draw, as we said, from um, a photograph in a magazine or one of your photos out of your imagination or from nature. I have a, also, we cut the block here. I'll show you how to cut these blocks. A big block here, but also we can do something very simple and small like that or another one on nature like this. Our second session will be uh, the actual printing and experimental printing. So we will see you then. Thank you.